This is the brand new Ford Mustang. It's a seventh generation Mustang and it could be the very last time this iconic muscle car comes with its signature V8 engine. But that's not all. Ford has just revealed a more powerful track focused version called the Dark Horse. They'll take on the BMW M4. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this car because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Recent Mustangs have done a great job of referencing the original car from the 1960s, but they all have their own individual character. The brand new Mustang does this especially well. It's a little sharper, a bit more angular than the previous generation car, thanks to a more upright front grille and squared off edges. The headlights aren't as pointy as before, but they're thinner, which make the car look meaner and more aggressive. There are a few different bumper designs depending on which engine you choose, but they all look simpler and less fussy than on the outgoing Mustang. Ford has also got rid of the horizontal daytime running lights that looks a little bit like an afterthought. From the side though, the new Mustang has a very similar silhouette to the current model. There's a long bonnet, a rate windscreen and a sloping roof line. However, Ford has actually tweaked the shape of the roof to make it easier to get in and out of the new car if you're wearing a racing helmet. It has also softened some of the creases down the side and made the rear wheel arches look even wider and curvier than before. It's a similar story around the back. The old car's contrasting boot lid trim is gone and the brake lights have a single kink in each vertical bar instead of two. You still get the Mustang's signature quad exhaust pipes underneath. And you can bet your bottom dollar they are real pipes. But what do you think of the look of the new Mustang? Do you like its 1960s inspired design? Or do you think the new Nissan Z is a cooler retro sports car? I've actually put a pinned comment down below so you can vote on which is your favourite. The new Mustang comes with a familiar choice of two engines. The range kicks off with a 2.3 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine in EcoBoost models. This is the same size as the old car's EcoBoost engine, but Ford says it's changed almost everything about it, including the internal geometry and giving it a new turbo. Ford hasn't confirmed how much power this new engine makes though, but it didn't bolt on a new turbo for no reason now, did it? So you can bet the new EcoBoost makes more than the 330 horsepower and 475 newton metres of torque of the old car. Now that's all well and good, but let's cut to the chase. Yes, you can still get this new Mustang with a good old fashioned 5 litre naturally aspirated V8. Yeehaw! It's similar to the V8 you got in the old car, but Ford says this new version produces more power than ever thanks to a new dual throttle body design. This means it'll crank up more than 450 horsepower and 556 newton metres of torque. Not only that, Ford has introduced a new feature called Remote Rev. This is exactly what it sounds like. You can rev the engine from the key fob while you're outside the car to enjoy the sound of the exhaust. The interior is one area where Ford hasn't stuck to the old school Mustang recipe. The seventh generation car comes with a completely new infotainment system that gets rid of the old car's analog dials. Now you get a 12 inch digital driver's display and a 13 inch central touchscreen on top of the dashboard. This runs some brand new software that features built in Amazon Alexa. But Ford didn't stop at revamping the Mustang's onboard technology. It also completely redesigned the whole car's interior. Besides a new touchscreen, the biggest change is the new centre console and dual air vents instead of the three round holes like you got on the old car. Thing is, this has left no space for physical buttons for the radio and climate control. Now you have to do all that through the touchscreen, which might prove a bit fiddly when you're driving. Anyway, you can get the new Mustang with a choice of seat designs. The range kicks off with cloth and vinyl seats in the entry level car. Mid spec models get fake leather trim and top specification GT versions come with real leather inserts. All models come with two small seats in the rear, just like the old car. Although passengers won't want to spend too much time there unless they're very, very small people. The new Mustang comes with a six-speed manual gearbox, just like the outgoing model. It gets a rev matching function as standard that helps you nail perfect downshifts every time. If you'd rather not change gears yourself, you can pay extra to get a 10-speed automatic, although this is only available on V8-powered GT versions. You can't get it on the 2.3-litre EcoBoost Mustang. Well, not from launch. If you really want to enjoy the sound of that V8, you probably want to go for the Mustang convertible. Yes, this new 7th generation model continues the rich history of drop-top muscle cars. Ford has not made it complicated. You get a fabric roof that folds away into the boot. Nice and simple. This soft top has been designed so that the mechanism doesn't take up too much space in the back. In fact, Ford says there's enough room back there to carry a couple of golf bags even with the roof stowed. The Ford Mustang doesn't have many direct competitors anymore. The Dodge Challenger and Charger will be phased out in 2023 to make room for the all-new electric Dodge Charger. The Chevrolet Camaro is another famous muscle car that'll bite the dust, this time in 2024. You'll still be able to buy a Corvette for a good few years, but that's more of a budget supercar than a muscle car now, isn't it? This means the closest alternatives to the all-new Mustang are Japanese sports cars like the Toyota Supra. So how do these cars compare? 
Well, Ford hasn't confirmed any performance stats, but when you consider that the new V8 is going to have more power than the old car, it's not going to be slower, is it? Today's Mustang GT with a manual gearbox does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds. The auto is a little bit quicker. It'll do 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Coincidentally, those are exactly the same times that a 3-litre Toyota Supra will do with a manual and automatic gearbox. It's a safe bet then that the new V8 Mustang will be a touch quicker than that. Cars with an automatic gearbox could get close to doing 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4 seconds flat. Now, if you want to see how the current Ford Mustang compares to the new Toyota Supra over the standing quarter mile, then just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link in the description below to watch my drag race. All new Mustangs come with independent front and rear suspension like you got on the old model, but Ford has given the 2023 car a new steering rack to make it feel sportier to drive. You can adjust exactly how sporty the car feels using six selectable drive modes. There's normal, sport, slippery, drag, track and a customizable profile when you can tweak other settings individually. On top of that, you also get all the usual driver assistance systems including adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition and automatic emergency braking. If that doesn't sound exciting enough, you can also get the new Mustang with an optional performance pack. This adds a front strut brace, a limited slip torsion rear differential, wider rear tyres and upgraded Brembo brakes with extra cooling ducts. You also get an active exhaust, optional Recaro sports seats and upgraded adaptive dampers. That's all pretty normal stuff in most serious performance cars. But what isn't very serious is the new Mustang's drift brake. This isn't just a manual handbrake with a fancy name, oh no. It's a beefy electronic parking brake that's been designed specifically to let you practice drifting in your brand new Mustang. Ford has even designed the drift brake handle to look exactly like a regular handbrake. One of the most exciting things though about the forthcoming Mustang is the new Dark Horse model. You can think of it like Ford's version of BMW's M competition cars. It's a more powerful, more track focused version of the V8 Mustang GT. For starters, Ford gave it a unique body kit with even bigger scoops, intakes and vents. Ford also tuned the engine and fitted conrods from the old 760 horsepower Mustang Shelby GT500. The company won't say exactly how much power this new dark horse actually makes, only that it's projecting 500 horsepower. This puts the new car in the same territory as the 510 horsepower BMW M4 competition. However, you won't be able to get the Mustang with four-wheel drive like that car, but you will be able to get it with the option of an automatic or manual gearbox. Hooray for the H pattern! There's also an optional handling pack that adds wider tyres, stiffer core springs, thicker anti-roll bars and a new rear wing. It's all designed to give you better traction, stability and control on a racing circuit. Speaking of which, you can order a stripped out dark horse S and Dark Horse R if you plan to do some serious racing in your new Mustang. These get rid of any unnecessary weight and you can even order them with a roll cage, safety net and a fire suppressant system. They're basically Ford's version of the BMW M4 CSL. The new Mustang will go on sale in the USA in 2023. Ford hasn't confirmed how much it'll cost yet, but it'll probably set you back slightly more across the range than the outgoing car. In America, a 2.3-litre EcoBoost Mustang will set you back just under $29,000, while a V8 GT model costs a smidge under $40,000. Expect the new Mustang to add a few thousand dollars to each of those price tags, and if you want to buy one in Europe or the UK, you'll have to wait a fair bit longer, and you'll have to pay more when it finally does arrive. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos, and if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.